Hi everyone, my name is Tanya Zuckerbrot. I am a registered dietitian and the creator and founder of F Factor. Welcome back to the third and last installation of my wellness series. I created this wellness series for the Women's Network uh, at Instagram and Facebook, and I've been able to share these videos with the F Factor community as well, which has been a double bonus. The videos were created with the hope of inspiring and motivating during this time of self-quarantine. We came up with three videos that would keep people's spirits up and giving them tools and tips to be productive and hopefully find the silver lining during this time. The first video was how to be productive during self-quarantine. The second video was about health and wellness, how to honor your health and your waistline during self-quarantine. And the last video, which I'll be delivering today, is finding the silver lining, how to discover your best self during self-quarantine. Now, when I first came up with the topic, I had believed that we were only going to be in self-quarantine for maybe two or three weeks. This is now the fifth or sixth week of self-quarantine, depending on when you started. And we have been home much longer than any of us anticipated. So the idea of finding the silver lining, discovering your best self, has really taken on a very different meaning for me. And therefore, what I'm going to share with you today is very much a departure from what I thought this uh, discussion was going to be about. I really thought that discovering your best self meant reflecting on these past few weeks and hoping that you had used this time to be productive and to focus um, on aspects of your life that you want to improve on um, once you know we're able to return back to our normal day-to-day. -day. But after being in self-quarantine now for, as I said, I think it's close to six weeks, I'm thinking really differently about what my best self means. One of the top things I've realized is that slowing down has been a gift. In my day-to-day -day life, I constantly found myself running to work, running home, running to a dinner, running to an event, and I was craving downtime. And yet I didn't know how to carve it out or slow down. And now that we've been home, I have found that yes, I'm still able to work practically full-time, um, you know, seeing clients virtually, continue to do um, my work on Instagram, and yet, because I'm not running around as much, I do have more time to spend on things that I really value, like my friendships, you know, calling friends who I don't normally speak to, certainly spending time with my family, and also spending a little bit more time um, on self-care. And for me, self-care isn't just, you know, using a facial roller. It's also about reading for pleasure. It's about meditating um, and even stretching. So the downtime that I was craving in my day to day has really been a gift during this time. And I absolutely want to continue to find ways to remove the clutter, the noise and the distractions in my life and be more purposeful about finding more downtime. I find that I'm more relaxed. I have less anxiety and I'm more joyful. So number one, the silver lining has been recognizing that downtime is essential to my well-being and I need to make more of it. Number two, in this downtime, I've recognized that I've been able to really think about what matters. When you're constantly running, you don't even have the time to think about what truly matters to you because you're barely breathing. You're just going and going and going. And now that we are all sort of moving at a slower pace, I've given some thought to my priorities. First of all, who are the people that I really care about? It's funny, during these times, the first people you call the people that obviously you care about the most. I made a list of people that I wanted to make sure they were okay and safe. And then as the weeks progressed, I knew that those people were safe and healthy. I went on to think, who do I wanna to speak to today that makes me laugh? Who makes me feel good? Um, and I really find that in this time of slowing down, I'm able to really prioritize the friendships that matter to me. And I actually made my family more of a priority, not just my 
family that is at home with me, my kids, but I called my cousins, I called my aunts and uncles, people that I probably only call once a year, you know, on their birthdays. But at the end of the day, what's more important than family? So I'm really happy that I was able to recognize the value of my family and reach out to them to let them know how much I appreciate them. So number two is understanding who matters to you. And as I said, returning to my day to day, hoping to keep those people a priority in my life. Speaking of family, one of the greatest gifts of this time in self quarantine has been the ability to work from home and be with my kids. I have worked full time my entire life um, throughout my pregnancies. Even when I gave birth, I only took two weeks maternity leave with my son and only one month when I gave birth to my daughters. And that's because I was a sole practitioner. I was in a private practice and if I wasn't going to work, um, I wasn't generating any revenue. So I have often struggled as a working mom with what I was missing. There were many times I missed dinners. There were many times I couldn't do drop off and pick up. And while I try not to carry guilt, um, deep down, you know, we always want to be there for our kids a hundred percent, but I also value the work that I do. Um, and I, have always been very proud of showing my kids what it is like to support your family and do work that is important to you, that stimulates you intellectually, but is also, um, you know, changing the lives of others. But to find that balance has always been a struggle for me. Whenever I would be at work, I would feel anxious, you know, and guilty that I wasn't at home. And whenever I was at home, I would always be concerned about what I was missing at the office. Well, this time of self-quarantine has forced me to work at home. And it's something that I have enjoyed much more than I ever realized. And I also recognize that I can successfully work from home um, and still honor my work for my company and still carve out time to see my kids. So my hope is that once I return back to working full time, Perhaps there is one day that I spend working from home and I find a better balance. And I think that's something that all moms are going to explore because I think this shows so many companies that women um, and men can be equally productive working from home and perhaps it will improve the dynamic of all families. My fourth takeaway to discovering my best self is recognizing that less is more. We live in a society of ultra consumption and I certainly have been guilty um, of that, whether it's like overbuying groceries or overbuying clothing. Um, and I just found that during this time of self quarantine, I didn't need as much stuff to be happy or even well fed. I've learned how to repurpose um, staples in my pantry. I've learned how to get by wearing, you know, what's in my closet. I have felt zero interest in shopping. And I I just think that many of us are recognizing that stuff is not really what makes us happy. What makes me happy is a blue sky, my health, my family, things that make me laugh, not the stuff. And I hope that as we come out of self-quarantine, we remember that we were happy with less and we start to reserve and conserve our resources and start saving more and spending less, which will not only allow us to focus on the things that we really value, but set us up for more financial security in the future, as well as allow us to really enjoy what we have. And the last thing that I really recognized, which did not come as much of a surprise, but I do want to share it with you, was the importance of philanthropy during this time. One of my favorite sayings has always been, when you take care of the needs of others, God will always take care of your needs. And I've tried to live that way. Um, way before self-quarantine, doing for others has always made me joyful. But during this time of having a roof over my head and food in the fridge and having my health and having my family healthy, more than ever, I realized how fortunate I was and I wanted to help others who were less fortunate. And the more philanthropy that I was able to contribute to during this time of self-quarantine, the more in control of my life that I felt and the more joy that I felt. 
So for me, discovering my best self was the absolute recognition that focusing on others, doing more for others is truly for me where I find my joy in life. And that is something I know that I will continue to do once I return to my normal life. But I hope it's something that I can encourage all of you to do during this time of self-quarantine is do for others, whether it's donate $5 to um, a food pantry, uh, uh, to a hospital that needs resources, or just maybe doing for others isn't necessarily even financial. Maybe it's just calling someone that could use some cheering up, someone that may be lonely, someone that maybe is going through a tough time. But doing for others, for me, has been one of the best things I can do to make myself happy. And I have found that that was equally so during the self time of quarantine. And I hope you guys are inspired to do more for others as well. And if not for them, then you'll see it really is for yourself too. I just want to take this time to thank all of you for allowing me to enter into your lives during um, this time. And I hope you've been inspired and motivated to live your best life despite the challenges um, that we are all facing. And I encourage all of you just to look inward and recognize that these weeks are flying by and therefore ask yourself, am I making the most of these weeks? What am I getting out of these weeks? And who do I want to be when all this is behind me? Until I see you again, I hope you all remain healthy and happy. Stay safe.